Get notifications and stay updated every time I post a challenge podcast by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you all and hope you enjoy. What's going on, everybody? I got a special guest joining me today. She's Heather Cook. Thank you for joining me today, Heather. No problem. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad uh, we were able to make this happen, you know. Um, you're, you kind of come up a lot. Um, I'm sure you could attest to it. I know you probably get your fair share of, like, uh, you know, tweets and comments from fans, like, where are you? Why aren't you back on the show? So, uh, you know, I'm glad I was able to make this happen and uh, look forward to doing this, so. <laughs> um, so, obviously, like, you know, a big thing from, uh, you know, your uh, story when you uh, came onto the real world and the challenge was your athletic background. So can you talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, maybe when you uh, took a liking to soccer and maybe, um, you know, your athletic background? Because, you know, you played uh, soccer, obviously, you know, nationally, and, um, you know, you were a Division One uh, athlete. So could you maybe talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, how soccer kind of became like, uh, you know, your thing? For sure. Um, so I've well, I guess I haven't been playing soccer my whole life now, <laughs> but because I've retired. But uh, I started playing soccer when I was four and um, played competitively in high school and did the club team thing. I used to travel four times a week, an hour and a half to be on the team so I could get in front of scouts. Um, and I did, and I was able to get a full ride to Loyola in Baltimore, um, which was awesome. And actually, Ironically, real world helped uh, my career after college because most people, they pretty much don't have a career after college. And because I'm in the real world, I came back and said, you know, I don't have a time job. You know, the world is my oyster. I can do whatever I want. I have, you know, nothing holding me back. And that's what made me reach out to the Philippines and go play for the Philippines national team. Um, and then I got to travel with countries, Southeast Asia, playing and representing them. Um, I dabbled with, um, this was right after the challenge. I, no, it was right before the challenge. So right before the challenge, I actually got drafted in, there was a draft extension for the NWSL for um, the Washington Spirit, the team in D.C. And I knew I was up for being, going to the challenge, and I told them, okay, well, that is my priority. If for some reason I make the team, like, I can't go. And last second, literally, I got cut on a Saturday and or something like that, and I called and let them know, and we were supposed to ship out, like, that next week. And I guess they told someone else not to go, and I got to go on the challenge, and okay, well, it sucks that I didn't make the team, but I also didn't think I was going to, and then I got to go on a challenge. So then, actually, right from the challenge, I ended up going straight to the Philippines from Thailand to play in a tournament. And then when I came back, I ended up um, training, and then I played, I did a preseason camp with the Chicago Red Stars, but I had already signed with the team in Sweden, and then I got and then pretty much after that, I just played a couple of years with the Philippines, and that kind of wraps up my college career. I actually now volunteer coach for a local college uh, down where I'm, where I'm from, so still able to like be around the sport, but uh, like 20 years, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, uh, you know... Kind of with the challenge, we see a lot of times um, there's more so like a case of people that are, you know, getting casted and coming onto these challenges are more so people with like, you know, really good stories or, you know, like good characters that they, you know, displayed on like the real world season. But it was, um, you know, kind of rare at the time when you came along, um, you know, obviously having the background that you did. Like, obviously you had like Emily there who was like, you know, a beast, but you actually like, you know, pretty much were, uh, you know, so I, I'd say, like, the one girl there with, like, a legit, like, you know, sporting background. And um, at that point in time, at least, it was, like, uh, you know, something that um, was pretty much unseen on the challenge from, like, a female perspective, you know? Right. My whole thing is, and I probably would, I don't know, back maybe, like, 
when the challenge happened, I would be shouting from the mountains that soccer players are like the best athlete. And, you know, it's not, I mean, that's when like CrossFit started coming out. And I was like, so anti CrossFit, especially because Emily was CrossFit. And now disclaimer, I do CrossFit now, but at the time I was like, okay, so CrossFitters are just really good at working out. They're not real athletes. And I still kind of feel that way, but um, like soccer was just, and I had you know, talked to a bunch of even like national team players and um, just known people and they were like, yeah, we always wanted to go on the challenge because like soccer girls are badass. And I'm like, yeah, we are. And it was just kind of like, we're we're, And I was thinking to each other the other day, like how we're just kind of like made for the challenge because I always said, if I get into a final, I'm like, I'm all about the final. Like the stuff leading up to the final, everyone's like, oh, I want to make it to a final. And we even saw in the last season, like, if you make it to the final, you can't even like do anything, like if you suck. So um, soccer players have that endurance. I mean, we even saw uh, Bessie gas out in the challenge, it kind of looked like. Yeah. Um, I mean, and again, the final is like an endurance thing. So I was like, I am made for this. Um, and soccer players, any soccer player that goes on this challenge will have that same mentality of, you know, I'm going to kill and we're going to go. So yeah, um, definitely brought that attitude when I went on the challenge. I know that. Yeah. I'm actually glad that uh, you brought that thing up about Fessy. Cause that just like, um, we, we'll get into that later, but, um, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, pretty interesting that you brought that up considering, uh, you know, maybe to some people, we weren't sure if you still kept up with the show. So that kind of, uh, you know. <laughs> That's uh, pretty um, interesting to hear, but we'll get into that a little bit uh, you know, later because I'm actually going to ask you a little bit about that. But now I kind of want to uh, you know, shift into kind of your casting, I guess you could say, process or story. Because obviously, you know, you came on as a replacement for Adam, who um, you know, got kicked off of that season. But what kind of played into uh, you know, your audition and how did um, you know, what kind of led to you auditioning maybe and um how did that process come about with uh you getting called to come in and replace them so i always wanted to be on the real world since i was in high school and i was and i said i'm gonna be on the real world and but once i had a full ride to play at loyola that was my first priority and i was tempted i remember the one there was like auditions in dc like either my sophomore or junior year I was like, I can't, like, if I've got on, I can't, like, leave, you know, school to go do this. So I already told myself, one, I'm waiting until I'm 21, so I can, like, definitely drink. And two, um, I need to graduate and get my degree. Um, and I didn't turn 21 until my senior year anyway. So it was kind of like a perfect storm. Um, I actually had the nickname in college, Real World. Like, they just call me Real World because, I don't know, I just got drunk and did crazy shit. But, um... So my, my last semester of school, I was actually dating someone and then it didn't work out and I was all like pissy about it. And I'm like, and I always said, I'm not, I'm not going to do this if I'm like dating somebody. So I was like, well, I might as well uh, go uh, try out or whatever. And um, yeah, so I ended up going to a casting call in Philly. Um, one of my roommates came with me and we woke up like super hungover that morning. We're like, we got to do this. Let's just go do it. And we stood in line forever and finally got in there and they called me back and it just kept moving forward. And, um, they called me to say if I was still available. And at that point I had started a job. Um, but you know, I didn't care. I was 21 and so set on like doing something different. And so when they called me and said, Hey, we like need you. Can you come out? And I said, sure. And then I like, I got a call on, I got the, are you available on Monday, on Tuesday? Um, they told me they needed me on Wednesday. I quit my job and Thursday I flew out to Vegas. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty unique because, you know, had Adam not done that, maybe, uh, you know, we might have not seen you. So I, I think uh, fans are probably happy that Adam, uh, you know, did what he did. So, and Weirdly, I ended up in Hermosa Beach a few years later, and Adam also was in Hermosa Beach, and we actually played on the same pickup soccer team um, for a summer, so that was pretty wild, and so I got a chance to kind of get to know him. I don't really talk to him anymore, 
Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool to, you know, just be friends with him, even that even though we were at, on the show at different times. Yeah. So now, what about your overall experience, um, you know, on your season in the real world, and uh, maybe who, if any, uh, of your roommates do you uh, still keep contact with? So, I mean, real world was an awesome experience because not many people get to do it. My experience was bittersweet. I mean, it was, you know, obviously cool to do, but at the same time, I had a shitty situation. I came in, those girls had it set in stone that they were going to hate me no matter what, as long as I was a female. And I also was very much a tomboy at the time and said, I don't really mess with girls. They're, like, too complicated for me. I just, like, want to have fun and chill with the dudes. So it was a perfect storm for, like, just drama, of course. Um, and I thought it was really some stuff, and then the stuff re-aired, and then people were assholes to me again. And I was like, you know what? I don't have time for, you know, these people in my life. And then the challenge happened, and I kind of mended some of those relationships. Um, but I don't really talk to Nani or Naomi anymore. I recently um, checked in with Leroy um, to say, hey, I haven't, I haven't had some Mike in forever, but he was one of my best friends. If he was my best friend on the real world. Um, and that's about it. I'm not going to talk to Dustin, and I'm not going to talk to Heather. So. <laughs> One time accidentally FaceTimed Heather for some reason. I guess she was a contact on my phone and she was like, did you mean to FaceTime me? And I was like, no, I did not. <laughs> yeah, it's actually funny that you mentioned uh, Dustin because he's been on my, uh, you know, show like twice <laughs> fairly recently and uh, him and I are actually, you know, pretty tight, but, you know. <laughs> Is he still in Louisiana? He's in New York right now. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Leroy, we need to have a reunion sometime because it would be great to like just see how everyone is. But who knows? You say old Dustin <laughs> for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh pretty interesting to uh, you know hear your side of uh, things and perspectives, you know, on you know your experiences and your roommates because you know there's like not a whole lot of representation of your season in that much anymore, with the exception of um you know Nani and Leroy, um you know on the current. You know challenge so that's uh it's good to hear you know your side of things but um i kind of want to move into now your thoughts coming on to the challenge now um obviously being a rookie we see in like you know historically it's been rookies always are like the first on the chopping block to you know get picked off because they're new but people kind of like i guess were intimidated or um you know respected you physically to where like you know more so, it wasn't, like, a thing of, like, let's throw her in because she's a rookie, but more so, of like, we got to get her out of here because if we see her in the final, like, you know, we're not taking her, you know what I mean? So what was, uh, you know, your thoughts coming on to the challenge, and did you maybe watch it beforehand? Was it something that you uh, had aspirations for getting on to? Yeah, so weirdly, uh, and people say I didn't deserve to be on the challenge or with Farah or whatever, but... I remember Cara tweeting me some shit like, who is this girl in the real world? F her, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, if I ever go on the challenge, I'm going to put this girl in her place because fuck her. She knows how this shit works and she's going to freaking, you know, say shit about me and she doesn't even know me. Like, and I was so mad about that. And then she happened to be the person that became my partner. Um, and honestly, like going in the challenge, like once Naomi was my partner, love her, but you know, she's not athletic whatsoever. So I knew right then and there, I knew we were not going to make it to the final. And to me, like, if I'm not in the final, it's like, what's the point of being there? So I kind of was like, whatever, like, you know, whatever happens, happens. Like, I'm just going to make the best of the situation. And then when she left and I got far, I was like, I can work with that. And immediately I saw, like, people, like, hated her. And I knew that was going to suck for me. But the first time that I went in elimination and realized – you know, like, they were just going to keep saying my name because they're not going to burn other bridges. I was like, well, bring it. Like, let's go in. Like, even though it can be a crap shoot, like, I don't care. I'm going to I'm gonna go. Um, and now when I watch the challenge, I see all these physical challenges with the females that they didn't have when I was around. I mean, it was, you know, you're not really touching each other. You're not having hall brawls. You're, you're not doing 
as physical challenges as they are now. And so even now I would be, if I was on the challenge, I'd be like, put me in, like, let's go. Like, let's see what happens. Um, except of course there's other stuff that you can never count on. But anyways, um, yeah, I kind of just, at that point, I was like, all right, throw us in. I'll come back. I don't care. Like, at that point, I, I volunteered to go in. And I don't know if they even showed that part, but we just were like, okay, we'll go in. Because we already know we're going in. doesn't matter. So, um, it all worked out. I mean, obviously, the best case scenario was that we won. Yeah. That, that's interesting. Uh, you know, we saw kind of uh, back when you were there, um, it was more so a thing of like, you don't want to go into eliminations, like, but you kind of like welcomed it. And then we saw, I don't know how much of the season you watched, but they, the theme of this season was like, you have to go in and win an elimination in order to like compete in the final. So I think that like maybe uh, this might have uh, catered to your strengths a little bit um, this past season, you know, if you were uh, in the fold. A hundred percent. I mean, it kills me to watch. I watch it. I'm like, I just imagine myself being there and this is what I would do, or this is how I'd handle this. And I'm like, it drives me nuts that I'm not there. But of course I have like my own life right now. And, um, I'm, I don't see myself ever going on the challenge, but I even told my husband, I'm like, once our son doesn't need breast milk, like I might take a six week vacation and it might be with the challenge. Just saying. <laughs> you know i think a lot of uh people that end up watching this are going to be like uh fingers crossed to hear you say that so <laughs> now what about your dynamic with nani on uh, rivals too because we saw how that thing kind of played out on um you know real world but what was uh the whole thing with you and her on rivals too like so we were friendly on rivals too um we all were in the same room um and I mean, I ended up sending her home, which, you know, sucked for her, but um, we, we all hung out. We were in the same group of friends on the challenge, and, um, and that's kind of like what I'm sad about, is that if I'm not on the challenge, then, you know, I'm not friendly with these people, and that kind of, like, breaks my heart, because, like, when I went on the challenge, I was like, oh, I made these friends, like, I'm going to keep in touch, and I'm very much that person. And then I would reach out to them, and unless it wasn't, unless it was on social media, like they didn't really give a fuck about me. And I'm like, oh, okay, so I guess like that was kind of fake. But I'm not saying she's fake. I'm just saying that unless like you're on the challenge, you're kind of like less relevant in people's lives because that is their life. You know what I mean? Um, and because, yeah. And because we live in different places, it's just harder. But if if I could have, I wish I could have done more challenges, and I wish I could still have that group of friends that I had made on the challenge. Mm, yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, so now, this is kind of like a uh, you know funny, more funny moment uh, from the elimination that um, you know you and Kara faced uh, Jessica and Anastasia in when, when you uh, were hanging from the thing and you peed. Could you talk to me a little bit about that? I mean, I don't know if you realize this, but the girl had a panic attack and was like, going back and forth forever. And also it was hot as shit in Thailand. So I'm constantly hydrating and drinking water and drinking water and drinking water. And they're just like screwing off. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm still sitting up here on this swing and I have to go to the bathroom. So I'm just going to go. And uh, I mean, that's like nothing new. I had this thing when I played soccer for the Philippines that, you know, every field that we went to, because I always have to pee right before the game even though I went a million times and I would just like pee on the field discreetly. So it just became my thing. of peeing. <laughs> how, how long were you up there for? Uh, I want to say like at least 30 minutes, maybe an hour. But like before, like the elimination started? Um, well, we were like on the swing for like 30 minutes to an hour. And I peed Jeez. literally and then we were there and it was just and it, I'm sure it was nerves too it was my first elimination I, mean, I just felt like I was ready for a soccer game and I'm like well you know I, like I don't want to be going into this like having a full bladder so. no yeah for sure like 
I I play football, and I can attest to the fact that like even if like I don't have to like go like like the pregame jitters like make you like they do some stuff to you, and it makes you like uh, you know it's all psychological, honestly. Yeah. So. What? When you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, yeah. So now, could you talk to me maybe about your perspective on, you know, Car Maria? Because since obviously, you know, you haven't been there, she's evolved quite a bit. She's always been a, you know, polarizing figure of the challenge, like since she's started, but we've seen her evolve like season after season mm -hmm. um and i'd say like after you left is when she really started like you know hitting her stride and becoming like uh i guess what you can call like um you know one of the top like competitors yeah and i i'd say like once maybe she started growing is when people um you know started to like as fairly recently i'd say um you know start to hate on her and like you know formulate opinions on her. Could you maybe give uh, your take since, you know, you were partnered up with her and it seems like uh, you uh, have a relationship with her? Yeah. Um, so I think very highly of Cara. And obviously I wasn't there for all the challenges after me. I, only, I can only see what I see on TV. Um, and I think she's evolved um, in a positive way. And you know, don't get me wrong, I had my difficulties with her as a partner, but, I mean, that's in any partnership, and I was always going to be straight up with her and tell her how I felt and tell her to suck it up or shut the fuck up, and I did. I mean, they showed that. Um, but at the end of the day, like, Cara gave me her best, and that's all I want. I mean, that's all I'm going to ever ask as a, you know, another teammate, a coach, whatever, um, a person, like, a, a friendship, anything. I only, like, I'm only going to ask for your best. And she, she, I really think she gave me that. And, you know, she gets a lot of hate on her and it drives me freaking nuts. And I even told out, told her and reached out to her and I was like, I wish I could just be on the challenge. So I, you could just have another, like somebody to defend you or be in your corner because people need to just shut up. <laughs> like people are so hateful and I, I don't really know why. It's just like, that's what the challenge is. It becomes like high school all over again and people need to bully somebody. And I really do think that she gets bullied at times. Um, so she put herself in certain situations, sure, but like she's been doing this a while, so she has every right to be like, I'm Cara, this is how I am. If you're gonna be a dickhead, like, F you. And so the whole um Jordan thing where she didn't go to the whole engagement party, I'm like, they don't want her there anyway, so why are we gonna make a big deal about her not being there and say she's a bitch? Like, why do you want somebody that doesn't want to be there there anyways? Like, that's so dumb. And People just blow everything out of proportion. At the end of the day, people hate on her because she has become a top competitor and she has wins and she keeps coming back and people need to like try to bring somebody down to feel better about themselves. I truly believe that. So um, if I were to ever return to a challenge, uh, I would be on Cara's team and I would be, you know, I would be in her corner and I would defend her to, against the bully because I can't stand that shit it's dumb <laughs> yeah just to echo basically what you said like i'm not gonna sit here and say like oh i'm the biggest car maria fan ever i don't have a problem with her but i'm obviously just like i'm like indifferent but mm -hmm. like i could definitely agree with um you know the points you just made like i basically have like the thing where it's like you know no matter what you do like people are gonna find uh, a reason to um you know hate on you or like you know say shit about you like no matter like what you do so, I mean, it's like, it's their own insecurities that are, uh, you know, coming out. And that's why uh, I feel as though she gets um, some of the hate that she does get. And I think she just gets like, kind of, because it happens to her in the moment, she doesn't really know how to respond. Um, where, I mean, I would probably, I mean, I don't know how it would be. I might be a little immature about it. I'd probably just laugh in somebody's face and be like, you feel shitty about yourself. So you're picking on Kara. And then I would just laugh. And, like nobody does that no like they just keep going and they gang up on her and not just her but other people and i just i would literally just laugh and be like this is a joke like you're sad like this is why but i don't know <laughs> I, 
I really like you don't understand. I really wish I could be on the challenge partly just to like help defend Kara because it pisses me off when people hate on her. Hey, I mean, the offer, uh, you know, could potentially be on the table anytime you want to come back. <laughs> Who knows? Um, yeah, but we just uh, obviously spoke about, you know, your rival's two partner. But now I'm going to, you know, put you on the hot seat a little bit. Um, and I'm going to kind of ask you, who did you maybe like and not like from Rivals 2? Um, so for the most part, so prequel, I wasn't really happy with how um, everything was shown on the real world. And it was actually a pretty hard time in my life when they aired everything, which I mean, having a shitty TV thing is nothing compared to what people really go through. So I really can't complain, but going into the challenge, I really set on, you know, setting my reputation straight and, um, you know, having them show the true me and not like the drama that they had on real world. Um, and I thought the challenge was a better avenue to showcase that because I was such a serious athlete at the time. Um, so going into the challenge, I really wanted to, you know, make peace with a lot of people. So Nani, Naomi, and unfortunately, because of how the girls felt with me on the real world, specifically Heather, um, she had uh, kind of cast the light on me from uh, with other people that were on the challenge. And those people came into the challenge thinking I was one way and that sucked for me because now I have to like defend my reputation or defend my character. Um, and those people, you know, attacked me and it was unfortunate, but for the most part, I really, you know, liked most of the people on rivals too. Um, I was really good friends at the time with Jemmy and, um, my buddy Knight. may he rest in peace. And, um, Frank, I didn't think I would be friends with him, but we were friendly. Um, and CT and Johnny, like, I mean, I really, and, and Jordan, like, I really had a good time with everyone. I remember sitting in the, sitting in my room on the floor thinking like, I'm going to do this for the next 10 years. Like, I love the challenge. Everyone else was miserable and hot and I remember Nani being like, this is the dumbest shit ever. I'm not going to do it again. And here Nani's still on the challenge and I haven't been on one since. So it's weird how things work out, but I, I love the challenge atmosphere. I'm like, we're getting paid to like, you know, hang out here and like, this is great. Um, so I had a good time and I wish I could still be on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I, uh, it's interesting to uh, hear the whole uh, Heather thing because I don't know if you knew this or not. And a lot of, um, you know, because obviously fans dig up everything. A lot of, uh, you know, people are disappointed because I've had Frank on my show as well. Um, apparently, Heather um, wouldn't let Dustin go to uh, Rivals 2 because you were going to be there. And we were supposed to be getting um, Frank and Dustin as partners. And they had, because they had a really big... Uh, you know, funny fight season before, and uh, a lot of people were disappointed to see we didn't get them. So, what well, obviously, like, circumstances are, like, insanely different now, you know, being, like, you know, seven-plus years later. But what would, like, then Cook think of, um, you know, Heather not letting Dustin go on the show? So, I actually remember hearing that, and there was one season that they asked me to be on. It was um, Battle of the Seasons, actually, and they asked me to be on that, and then they called me back and said that I couldn't be on it. And basically we found out, I like found out somehow that the reason was Heather didn't want Dustin to be on the show with me. And I was fucking pissed because it was like, at that point I hadn't been on the challenge yet. And that's like what I always wanted to do. And I was like, damn it, blah, blah, blah. But, um, so, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of glad Dustin wasn't on Rivals 2 just because he can be dramatic and he annoyed me on r the real world. But, um, so, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But now I'm going to ask you, because uh, these are two polarizing figures, and I'd say that you are more so on the west side of things on Rivals 2. Um, what? Well, I mean, you just said that you got along with um, everybody. I was basically going to ask, like, um, you know, what was your thoughts on uh, Bananas and Wes from, like, your perspective being on the show with them? But also now, seeing as how this season they became, uh, you know, friends and partnered up. So maybe both perspectives, being with them and now now seeing them together. So it's weird because, you know, I grew up watching the show. And then to be on the show and then see them, kind of like, what's his name? He got kicked off the first, or he, he went into two eliminations and got sent home the second elimination of the, this recent season. Jay? Okay. Jay, yeah. And he was, like, totally fangirling about them or whatever. Um, so I wouldn't say that I was, like, that bad. But I um, I just remember, like, seeing them and being, like, this is so wild. Like, I remember seeing Wes and Johanna or whatever her name is and Johnny, whatever. But, like, Johnny, there's something about Johnny where even though he's, like, at times the biggest dick of the show, like, People still like him, whereas Wes is at times less of a dick, but people freaking hate him because Johnny will hate him. And I kind of brought that on the show with me. And I remember like talking shit with uh, Wes one night and, you know, I was drunk and just being my usual like, you know, self. And he was just like. I don't know. He kind of put me in the pl in my place and was just like, oh, yeah, you don't know me from shit. Like, why are you doing this? And I, like, thought about it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. And I ended up being, like, really good friends with Wes. Um, and he's, like, a really big soccer fan, too. So, naturally, that worked out. Um, and so, I didn't really understand why Johnny and Wes never got along because, you know, I got along great with both of them. And, you know, Johnny voted me in every freaking time. Um, but I actually met Johnny before I went on the show. Um when I was, I guess he had like a, him and Kenny Santucci or whatever his name is, they had yeah. a, 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 what do you call it, like an appearance thing down in Myrtle Beach. And uh, I rode with Mike Ross um, down there with them and met them there and we just partied. But um, so I knew Johnny before I went on the show. So I kind of like already like liked him or whatever, but then he voted me in. I was like, okay, well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> What did you think of them uh, working together this season, though? Um, I'm not surprised because the whole adding different shows into the mix, I can imagine can be it, – it just creates a whole nother dynamic. And they had to work together in order for, you know, the original challenge people to, like, stay alive in this because with people coming in with alliances just because they were on the same show together, like – I mean, we saw in the challenge before, War of the Worlds, like, if you're not working together, like, you're working against each other, and now all of a sudden, like, you know, we lost at our own game. So, um, and that's shitty. So I think that it was a necessary evil, and clearly they got along fine. <laughs> yeah. It, it was like, um, and I, I think someone else pointed this out that I had. I think Trey... I had Trey on here. Like, he was one of my uh, original ones. I think he pointed this out as well. He said that um, he felt like maybe behind the scenes it wasn't as, um, you know, cutthroat as um, it was made out to be on TV. And he thinks that maybe behind the scenes they were actually buds this whole time. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't say buds either, but, like, I don't think that necessarily outside of these shows they're trying to, like, rip each other's heads off. I think they're, it's, like, a business relationship maybe at least. Yeah, I mean, all I know is that when the show starts, everything is exacerbated and, like, people become different people. Like, it's not, you know, we will literally be in the airport on the way to the challenge and everyone's, like, happy-go-lucky and then it's soon as we arrive at location like people's eyes roll to the back of their head once they figure out the theme and who's on their team and who's not and like people don't give a shit about each other yeah so you obviously just brought up the whole um big brother well not specifically big brother but the other shows big brother is one of you know the 
bigger shows that they've been pulling from and, um, you know, UK people as well. What is your thoughts on them, you know, casting these other shows? Um, I think it's what MTV had to do to, you know, keep the ratings up and generate more, a, a broader audience. So, um, I think it's a good thing. Um, because you get different personalities, you have more diversity that way. Um, it's not the same types of people applying for the real world or the challenge. It's now, you know, people involved in different things. And it just changes the game completely because of the whole, you know, alliances that people will come in naturally with. Mm. So now I mean, we've been talking a little bit about that. Yeah. I would definitely hate it. And I think about that sometimes like oh if I was on like I would have to deal with these people and I wouldn't want to because I don't know they come in with their personality which is kind of obnoxious and they're like oh I was on Big Brother or I was on this show and blah 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 and I'm just like okay settle down there um like let's see you let's see you in the challenge like it's not about what show you were on or you know who you're friends with like let's see you in a challenge because that you know that's how I roll I'm all about like performance and stuff i'm not about the political part of it the you know the alliances like you saw me get to a final with nobody giving a shit about me so um and that's just how i work so and i feel like it would be very hard for me to bite my tongue with some of the new people that come in, have come up in the challenges <laughs> i would really want to put them in their place but i would really have to tell myself it's not worth it yeah so, you know, we've talked a little bit about the, uh, you know, seems like you're actually quite a frequent watcher. So I'm going to kind of ask you, like, um, maybe some little brief thoughts on this past season and how you think you would fare against, um, you know, some of the newer uh, ladies on the show. More specifically, uh, you know, Jenny's a name that I think uh, a lot of people would uh, like to know Je about. Emily. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's exactly what I said. So I'm really curious on how I'd match up. In my head right now, first thought I had after the final, I was like, if I made this final, I would have won it, hands down. Don't give a shit, I would have made it. I just would have. Um, even if I didn't sleep the whole freaking night um, and like didn't get to be all cozied up, like, I don't care, I would have made it. Um, I mean, it was an endurance race. It was, you know, just put your head down and keep trucking and that's what I do, that's what I'm good at. Um, and, so really, and I, I mean, I will always believe that unless, and they didn't have to eat nasty ass shit like I had to. And that's the only freaking reason why we lost in Rivals 2 is because, and I said this from day one, I can't eat nasty shit. And if I have to, that's going to be, you know, my Achilles heel. And what do you know? That's why we pretty much lost. Um, so, I mean, Jenny physically looks like she's in great shape um and i guess she practices her math but i do well under pressure and i'm physically fit and i have no doubt in my mind that i would be crushing the challenge right now and <laughs> unless there was like you know an anomaly or something that could go either way or that was out of my control or like I missed something where, like, Laurel missed a hole and then she loses, loses an elimination. That is what would have to happen for me to lose in any of these scenarios. But if everything could go the way that it should or, you know, without anything crazy happening, I'd freaking be in the winner's circle, 100%. There is no doubt in my mind. <laughs> And that's why it kills me that I don't get to participate. Yeah, I saw something on Twitter fairly recently. They were asking a question. Um, some one of the uh, you know challenge fan pages posted. They had like a um, like a pick collage, and you were one of the people. And they were like, "Oh, which of these people is like the best shot of beating Jenny?" And then, and then like, I I was like, "Is this a question?" Like we saw like. I mean, granted, no disrespect to any of the ladies. Like, I'm not just sitting here telling you this because, you know, I'm speaking to you. But, like, you have, like, a legit sporting background. Like, like <laughs> I don't understand, like, how it would be a question. You know what I mean? Like, Jenny, 
obviously killed the Hall Brawl this season. But if we flash back to uh, last season when she versed um, Tori, she kind of, uh, you know, didn't do so well. Jenny even said herself, like, she wasn't, um, she had no experience with, like, um, contact sports in her entire life, like, until Hall Brawl. So, like, if you put you in a situation with her in that, like, I mean, what do you expect is going to happen? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's... I mean, like, she looks great, and you can tell she freaking works out and has discipline, but, like, that's kind of the difference between, like, an athlete and somebody that just, like, works out a lot. Like, there's something about us where, you know, the eyes go in the back of our heads, and we just can go to a place. I mean, I think somebody even said it. It's final. That just happened. Like, you just find a way to make it happen, and there's something about soccer players specifically that can do that because we have to go for 90 minutes sometimes more and I've done that so many times in my life it's like second nature so I don't I don't have to like talk myself into it I'm already there Mm -hmm. so now this uh you know kind of question is more of like a uh like I'll help the fans sleep at night sort of question that they uh you know want to know so could you maybe, uh, you know, shed some light on uh, maybe any close calls, if any, that you had after Rivals in terms of maybe, um, you know, doing a show and why we haven't seen you again? And would you be open to coming back if, like, the timing was right? Okay, so I've been, I've been called a handful of times um, and the timing just wasn't right, whether it was soccer related that I already had commitments or I was dating someone and I wasn't willing to go on the show because of that. Um, for two years. Um, and, and now it's just, um, I think the last time they asked me, I was like, oh, that's getting married for a night so I can't go on the show they're like oh that's pretty important and I, ever since then I feel like you know there's not too many married uh females on the show and now that I have uh my child I feel that it would be really hard for me to win um to go on the show I mean maybe I could leave for like six weeks um, while he's still young and doesn't remember, but it would it would still be really hard. And I'm not saying that it's not hard for the guys to do, and I know some females have done it in the past, but um, I'm just an all-in kind of person, give my best, and giving my best in... Mm. It would be really hard for me to get away from him. Do you think, like, you would have the opportunity to be invited back, though? But, I mean, we saw Anissa come back from, you know, how many years has she not been on the challenge? So, uh, you never know. And, you know, me being an athlete and spitting off that I can take all these bitches, <laughs> I'm sure they would want to see if I, if I could live up to my word. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this and, um, you know, be prepared. Uh, you know, your Twitter might be blown up once this uh, post. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to um, do this with me. No, thank you so much. It was nice kind of reliving the memories that I had. Um, I really wish that I could be on the challenge. Uh, I'm still a fan, so <laughs> it is what it is. Right. Uh, hey. I'll link you when it's up. Thank well, you. Take care. You too. Bye.